Okay, welcome everybody. Um, a few more people are just kind of coming in right now. So we'll just kind of, I have to admit everybody that comes in for some reason. Um, but looks like we got most of the people here. Um, if you could make sure, I, I'm, in, I'm pretty sure everybody's muted. Just make sure you are. Um, and if you could, can you put your, your name down into the chat so I can make sure I get that you were here? Because I'm trying to write them down as y'all come in, but uh, a lot of you are coming in really, really quickly. So I'm not able to write down that fast. So um, it would be very helpful if you could just type into the chat your name. And there we go. I'm seeing them. Great. Love it. Let's see how many people we got so far. Pretty sizable amount, good. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes before we get actually started. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm Kyle, by the way, I'm the new youth minister. Um, I just took over for Craig. And so uh, I'm really excited to get this show started. Um, just a reminder that at 6.30 tonight, we will be having our youth ministry kickoff. So that's Life Teen and Edge. So invite all your friends. Uh, I'd love to see you. We're just going to have, how about asking everyone to put on their video? Uh, yeah, that would be a good idea as well. So I could see your lovely faces. So if you guys want to put your video on, oh, there's a dog. I love it already. Um, yeah, so please put on your videos. Uh, but tonight will be the, the kickoff event for our youth ministry here. So uh, please just Come and hang out. We're gonna have games outside. We're gonna have some some ice pops, some sodas, some just some music, just to uh, kind of hang out, get to know everyone, and get out of the house. Cause I know I'm tired of being in the house all the time. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. Okay, well, I think that's mostly everybody. Um, hopefully, I haven't forgotten anybody, and I'll make sure to bring them in if I did. Uh, but let's get this started. So we're going to first start out, uh, like we always do, uh, in prayer. So if you'll join me in entering prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here today even if it's virtually. We thank you for the gift of a new day, the gift of community, of our friends and our family. Please inspire us with your Holy Spirit to listen to what we have to talk about today, to enter into your mysteries and to truly know you. Reveal yourself to us today in what little ways that you can and uh, please help us to love you in the little ways that we can as well. Uh, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So to begin today, I have a nice little video um, that the life teen has so lovingly given me uh, because there's no way I could make this high quality video myself. So let's hopefully, because technology loves to not work sometimes. All right. We build incredible buildings. We create magnificent works of art. We write songs that are rich with poetry. All of us have this desire to be extraordinary, this desire to be great. Fill this desire for greatness, this ache, in a lot of different ways. We try to fill it with money or power. We try to fill it with romance or the next new thing. But sometimes we find ourselves restless in the world. We find ourselves unsatisfied with what the world offers us. There's always gonna be a bigger building to build, a better song to write, something more beautiful to paint, more friends to gain, more love to get. And this can leave us feeling kind of sad and broken. It can leave us with a lot of questions. What if one day you came across a notebook and it had questions in it 
questions that maybe have been stirring in your heart, what would you do? How would you respond? And maybe you'd wonder who's asking those questions. What is your biggest goal? It's just enjoying life. Achieving uh, financial independence. To be happy and find love. Oh, so many. <laughs> I want to be a dancer. To be the CEO of a company. Be strong in my faith. What makes you happy? Having all my friends over. Just uh, spin around people. <laughs> Jesus makes me happy. <laughs> First and foremost is family. My family makes me happy. My family. Describe the feeling of love. Wow, that's a... How much time do we have? I'm not quite sure. I don't know if I've experienced it yet or not. The best feeling one can have. Love is just caring for somebody and wanting the best for them. Feeling safe with being vulnerable. Like being able to share really easily. Showing uh, compassion. You know, I've heard it said that love is actually a choice. Being selfless towards the people that you care about most. When you have like butterflies in your stomach. When do you feel the most alive? When I'm out in the nature, uh, looking out uh, over this beautiful river. I don't know to, how to answer that one. <laughs> when I'm working on one of my goals or something that I'm really passionate about. When I'm on the ride and maybe pier the swings. When I'm in Honduras on mission trips. When my son is around. Do you think most people are satisfied with their lives? I do not because I think people always have higher expectations. They don't know what they're missing or they just are not there yet. I don't. I think that's because most people have a lot of goals and it's really hard to achieve them. It's just up and down. Today I'm excited about life. Tomorrow I may not be. Depends on where you come from. Most people are always looking for more. Most people chase after silly things. Not a lot of people know who God is and so they must have like an empty feeling because not having him is just unfathomable to me. I just can't imagine not having him. That's it. St. Augustine said, Lord, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And so God asks these questions that make us restless. God says, what are you really seeking? And God asks the questions and then God waits for our response. God invites us and looks at us longingly and says, come on an adventure, let me satisfy your desire for something more. How will you respond? Okay, so if you couldn't tell by the topic of that video, um, today's topic uh, and really the whole point of this confirmation, these confirmation sessions that we'll be having is asking the big questions in life. Uh, it's good to ask questions about our faith. And honestly, I don't wanna just be the guy that tells you uh, what to believe or what you should follow. Um, I wanna work with you guys to kind of find out uh, what do you truly believe uh, and why do you believe that? We shouldn't just stop at what. We should, at, we should be able to answer, why do we do what we do? Why do we believe what we believe? Because um, what, what isn't good enough? Um, if we can say or we can see anything about the world today is that um, people are very open on saying what they believe and what they know to be true. Uh, but once we start asking bigger questions, we kind of just fall apart. And we start getting angry and just yelling at each other. Um, so hopefully by the end of these confirmation sessions, uh, we're able to be a little bit better on explaining ourselves why we believe what we believe. Um, as Catholics, as Christians, as persons. Uh, and so these big questions, all the most fundamental question we're going to have in our faith is why believe in a God? Why believe in anything at all? Um, and this is actually something super uh, important to me because, well, even though I'm a youth minister and here I am working for the church and uh, I get paid by the church to teach the faith and walk with you guys on your faith journeys. I was not always a Catholic. I was not always a Christian. Um, in fact, freshman and sophomore year, I was agnostic because I'd been taught what to believe. Um, my family raised me to go to Sunday and uh, to go to church and to be a nice person, but that wasn't that wasn't enough. I didn't I didn't want to just believe in something somebody else told me to believe. Uh, so I became agnostic and I said, I don't know what to believe. And so I searched for um, a lot of different faiths. I read a lot. I read Hindu, uh, Jewish, is there a Muslim, 
all different types of faiths, um, all their holy texts. And uh, I always just kept kind of coming up short. I was like, this is good, but it's missing something. And so finally I came to the church in my confirmation program. Um, and my parents like, hey, you don't have to, you don't have to be confirmed if you don't want to, um, but you have to go through these classes. Uh, and so I did begrudgingly. I did not want to, I wanted to hang out with my friends like every week. Um, and finally I went on a retreat and I went into adoration and it kind of just clicked on me. Wow. Okay. This is real. So now my life is completely different because I believe in a God. Uh, and now what do I do with this? And so that's kind of the point of today is why believe in a God and what do we do when we believe in a God? So the first question really is, how do we know that there's a God? Um, and a, there's a lot of answers for that question uh, today. And a lot of people will start out well with, you can't, you can't say that there's a God because you can't see him. Science proves that there is no such thing as a God. Um, and first of all, do not think that I'm here to like bash on science. I love science. I actually studied to be a psychiatrist before um, I left to uh, study in theology to be a youth minister. So I think science and faith are so wonderfully inter interwoven. Um, so it's important to have both. But it's important to recognize the limits of both as well. So science, science is important for understanding tangible things. So things that we can see, we can sense. Um, things are like, what is, what is that? Uh, how does that work? When does that happen? Like these more tangible questions. So like, this is a piece of paper. Science can verify that. Um, but it's also limited in this, the aspect that it can only define things. It can't really go deeper into what's the purpose of something. So this science can tell me that this is a piece of paper. It came from a tree. You can probably figure out what tree it was, um, but it can't tell me why we made it into a piece of paper. What do these words mean? Um, what's the point of even making paper in the first place? Um, and so science has its limits. For example, can science answer what something valuable is? Can it answer why we think something's beautiful? Can it answer why we believe something can be true and somebody else can think it's not true? Can science explain what justice is? Can the science explain what love is? It can explain the biological processes that we go through um, but there's something more to love than just what it makes us feel. And science really can't answer that. And so we find that through looking in science, it gives us this wonderful wealth of knowledge, but it ends up being short. Um, and there's something more to the world than just what we can sense and what we can see. You can even see that in the body. For example, you could argue that we are just, um, people run by biology, the biology of our body, and we're just reacting to the things around us. But we know through psychology that that's not the case, that we can choose things differently. And so there's, even in science, there's a, there's a limit to it. Um, and so this is where philosophy and theology comes in. And so this starts to enter into the deeper questions, the why questions. Why are we here? Why am I a person? How do I know that I am a person and not just um, this is some dream or some uh, uh, simulation that's happening. Um, why do other people act differently than I do? Why do other people believe differently than I do? Um, so philosophy really enters into these deeper questions, but then it also has its limits. It can't really, philosophy can't explain what two plus two is. Um, philosophy can't explain what um, I am made of. So each requires each other to kind of fulfill itself um, to get the whole picture. So we can't just get stuck in saying, well, science can prove God exists or can't exist. Philosophy can prove God exists or can't exist. We need both. Um, and this is where we as humans have something special that no other animal can. We can ask questions. 
We can imagine things and we have reason. We can think about things. Uh, so we're able to use both our senses and our reason to kind of figure out what is in this world around us and why are we here. Um, and so this is a, well, later we'll get to re recognizing that this is a gift from God and how we're made in his image. Um, but looking at it from a purely asking the question, is there a God? This is important because this is how we come to know the world through our reason. And so if we are going to know that a God exists, we have to use them. We have to use all of the tools given to us. And so actually the church does not just have statements saying God exists because he told us he exists because that, 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 that doesn't, that's not good because that's, that's a terrible answer. I could say I'm a doctor and I'm not, but if I say that I am, you just have to believe it. Um, that's not a good answer. So the church actually has explanations for God's existence uh, through reason. Um, actually, it was created, most of them were created by a really famous philosopher and theologian called Thomas Aquinas. Um, and he gave five proofs of God's existence. So I have a, we're not going to go through all of them because that's a whole nother topic. And I had an entire class just on that in college. But uh, I have kind of a summation of it. And so the, there's five proofs. There's a proof of motion from causation, from contingency, from degree, and from design. So the first one, the proof of God's existence through motion. Um, things, things are moving. And we know from science that an object in motion must stay in motion unless another force acts upon it or against it. Um, and so that means that if things are moving, that means there was something that must have happened that caused things to move in the first place. So imagine you're looking at a train and it's, it stretches from one end of the world to the other, as far as you can see. Uh, and all you see are your, the carts in front of you just continually moving. You can't see the front or the end. It's just the carts in front of you, but you know it's moving. Well, these carts wouldn't move on their own unless they're acted upon by another force. And so we can reasonably assume that there has to be an engine at the front of these trains that are moving. And so this is kind of what Aquinas is saying that if things are moving, if things are happening in the world, well, something first must have caused that. And so that would be God. Um, his second proof, this is from causation. Um, things exist and they really have no reason to. Uh, the, really, if the universe was just uh, run by how science can view it and understand it, uh, nothing should exist at all because there should have been nothing in the first place. So if there is something that exists, something must have been there to cause it to be or to be created. Um, and so that is where his causation uh, argument comes from. Um, there's also, let's see, things cause something else. And so there has to be a first causer. That's kind of like the, the past two. Um, he, he goes into a little bit more detail on this and that's why that's a different one from the last two, but, uh, really it's, he's arguing from the same things. And then the next two are a little bit different. Um, this is the next one's from degree. And so goodness and love exists. So we know that um, things are good no matter who say or who says they are good. Um, and even if I'm not there to experience something that's good or to be loved, um, it still exists. So that has to come from somewhere. And so there has to be a source of goodness. There has to be a source of truth. There has to be a source of love. And so that, Aquinas argues, would be God. And then finally is by design. So things appear to be designed. Uh, the human body just works so perfectly. Um, and so uh, amazingly so uh, that there has to be a purpose to this design. And so that's his final one. That one requires a little bit more um, faith in it than the last ones. Um, but these are his proofs that he came up with in like the, the 12th, 13th, 14th century. Um, so people have been thinking about this for a while. How do we prove God's, God's existence without just talking about believing in God? 
And so uh, these are kind of our ways of being able to understand God exists through just thinking about it. Um, but there's also another person that has really put a lot of effort into proving God's existence. Uh, and this is from C.S. Lewis. Y'all know C.S. Lewis? He's the uh, dude that came up with uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, Narnia, and stuff like that. Um, movie's great, by the way. I don't know if y'all watched it, but I loved it when I was watching, when I was a kid. But he has also done a lot for theology and for Christianity as well. And so he actually came up with his own proof for God. And this is from the proof of desire. So when we think about our lives, we have a lot of desires. Um, and we find that most of them can be fulfilled. For example, if I'm hungry, I know that I desire for food and I'm going to go eat. If I'm thirsty, I desire for water or a drink, and I'm going to go drink, and then that's fine. Um, but there are some things, some desires that cannot be fulfilled. Uh, for example, we desire things like beauty. We desire goodness. We desire to know the truth. We desire justice. We desire to be loved. And we can't just go out to something and fulfill that. Everything that we find um, kind of still leaves us wanting. We're never really satiated, uh, but with those needs. And so uh, he even says, I, nobody in this world has ever said, I've seen enough beauty. I don't need any more of that. I've, I've heard enough music. I don't need to listen to that anymore. Uh, I've known enough truth. I don't need to know anything anymore. Um, so Lewis kind of, puts it out there and says, if I find a my, in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. Mm. And so this is from his proof of a desire that there's something inside of me that can't be fulfilled with this world. So that must mean that there's something else that fulfills that desire. And so that something else uh, ultimately is God, because God is not in this world. He's not of this world, because if he was, then that would mean God was created, and God isn't created. He existed before things, before existence, uh, and so God caused things to happen. God caused uh, creation to be created, uh, so he's outside of it, and so these are all the proofs and understandings of God that we can attain just through thinking about it, through perceiving it, through our senses, through our reason. Um, and so if it's a kind of reasonable argument to be made that God exists, that changes everything in our lives. Uh, because that means that there's a higher power who wants to be known to us and he wants to know us. And so that radically changes how we can live our lives, knowing that there's someone out there, something out there who wants to know us personally and wants to be known personally uh, and will do anything to make that happen. And so this is where we get revelation. This is where we get the Bible. This is where we get scriptures. Uh, we get this from divine revelation as the church calls it. So this is God revealing himself to us, telling us about himself to us. So it's kind of, think of it as an example of knowing of somebody versus knowing them personally. So I can know uh, of President Trump, or I know I can know of Kanye West, or I can know of um, uh, anybody else, but I don't know them personally, so I can't really say I know that much about them what I need is for them to be able to tell them about, to tell them or tell me about themselves. And so, for example, uh, I know my mom very, very well because she's told me things about herself and she knows me very well because I have revealed myself to her in telling her about my feelings, about my thoughts, how my day goes. Um, so this is how we really get to know people on a deeper level by, talking by revealing ourselves to each other and so god wants to be known 
and he wants to know you on a deeper level. So he opens up this relationship through revelation. Uh, and you can see it throughout scripture that it's, it's actually quite amazing that how open God is and how almost desperate he is to get us to know him. Um, throughout all of scripture, you can really summarize it down to God just saying, I'm here. Will you love me? Why won't you love me? Am I not enough? And so we see how raw and open God is to be hurt in that way of being, of reaching out that far for somebody, for us who might not even recognize his own existence, but still he pursues us. And it's, it's truly beautiful. And this is because revelation not only is him revealing himself to us, but it's also an invitation to get to know him. So we, we know that we can come to know God through our reason and through our senses, um, but we also come to know God by being who we were made to be. So God created us with a purpose, and this was to love and to be loved. And so we come to know God more by being who we were made to be. So if we love others, if we love God, and we allow ourselves to be loved, we can come to know God a little more uh, because we are acting in the way that we were made to be acted. Uh, and so if we know a few things about love is that it has to be free. So you can't force somebody into loving you, and you can't love somebody into loving you. Uh, but it, so it has to be a free gift. You have to give it willingly and you can't be forced to love somebody. And also love wants to be returned. So when you love somebody, there's kind of an expectation that they return that back to you, that they love you back, that they return those feelings, um, those promises that you make with love. And so it really hurts us when that doesn't happen, when uh, we're denied of that return for love. And so this is kind of what God experiences um, because we were made to love him, um, to serve him and to love each other. And so when we fail to do that, when we choose something else, that's where uh, a lot of hurt enters this world. Um, and in fact, that's what sin really is. Sin is, does not, ex evil and sin does not really exist. Um, it's a lack of something that should be there. And so when we fail to love others and to love God, that's where evil enters because that love doesn't exist there anymore. Um, and so this is, if this is also true, this is also something beautiful because we exist because God loves us. So the very fact that God loves us ensures that we continue to live. So if we, if we lived healthy lives, if we ate properly, um, if we didn't do anything bad, uh, there's still no guarantee that we'll live to see the next day. Uh, but the very fact that we still exist now is not because of the work that we put in. It's because God continues to love us, to keep us existing uh, until our time finally comes. Uh, and so the very fact that you're here right now proves that God loves you. And I think that's something that's just so beautiful. Um, but it's also God taking a huge risk because God is saying, I'm going to go out on a limb and love you and make you or have you exist. Uh, but I'm not going to force you to love me back. It's up to you. It's up to you to believe if I exist at all. It's up to you to live your life the way that you see fit. I know how I created you and I know how you're supposed to, uh, what, gift you're going to be to this world but it's up to you to decide animals who you're going to be. and so i think uh this is something that's the most this is the most fundamental part of what happens when we come to believing in god um that if we believe that god exists this is why we should believe because if god exists um that means we have some purpose in this world that we are called to fulfill. Uh, we have something to give to this world that nobody else can. And so this is what 
is so beautiful about God's existence is that we have something to offer to the world that nobody else could have before and nobody else that will follow us ever will. And God trusts us to do it. Whether or not we trust in him, God trusts in us. And so uh, that's really what we're going to talk about today when we come in for small groups is asking these bigger questions. Why do I believe in God? Why do I, or what, how does believing in God affect my life? How do I talk with other people who don't believe in God or believe in a different God? Um, and so we will be coming in at the first small groups will be coming in at four o'clock till 445. You'll meet with your small groups. And then between 4.45 and 5, we are going to be having our uh, right of enrollment for everyone. So everyone will be here for that. Uh, so that means the first groups, you'll be staying a little bit later. And the second groups, you'll be coming a little bit earlier this time uh, to do this right of enrollment. And this is just a beautiful way of showing or publicly announcing to the church and the church receiving you guys uh, and saying that I want to go on this journey. I want to seek God because um, God is seeking us eternally. And so maybe it's about time I do something about that. So um, after that, from 5 to 5.45, the second small groups will meet. And then at 6.30 to 8 o'clock, we'll be having our, our youth ministry kickoff. So this is EDGE and Life Team. So everybody's invited. Bring your friends. Um, just it's going to be a fun time. And uh, there's going to be snacks. There's going to be sodas. There's going to be games. So just come and uh, I'd love to meet all y'all. If you guys want the latest updates and stuff, you guys can follow us at, I just put it in the chat right now. These are, this is our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And this is where you're going to get the most up-to-date info. Um, and also, if you guys have questions about today that you can't really get answered or something pops up into your head, uh, Feel free to send it my way through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, or bring it up in your small groups later today. And uh, actually next week, the topic for Life Team is going to be on this as well. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more in depth about these questions that you guys have about why I believe in anything at all. Um, and if they're good enough, I might even make a post about it on Instagram and Facebook, uh, doing a Facebook Live, just answering questions. So with that said, um, also, please, if you can, register yourselves at this link, and that will just make sure that you and your family get all your emails, the texts that you need, so you know when things are happening, what are the Zoom links, all that stuff. And uh, that should be everything. So group A, I will see you guys at 4 o'clock. Group B, I'll see y'all at 4.45 for the ride of enrollment. So thank you guys for coming, and uh, I'll see you in a little bit.